Hey everybody and welcome to my room tour. This has been my most requested video uh, so far anyway. And I've wanted to do it for so long, but they were, it just seemed like every time I was trying to plan to do it, something would come up and sort of delay it. And then finally, you know, it, it sort of got to the point where I was like, you know what, if I'm gonna do it, I need to just go ahead and do it. I can't wait for everything to be perfect. And so that's what I did. And I tried to cover everything in the room. Uh, obviously, if I missed anything, or if you guys have any questions about anything, definitely let me know and I will try and answer them. I can even uh, try and do a follow-up video if there's anything specific you guys wanna uh, see more uh, details on or anything. Now this is obviously a little bit longer than my usual videos. I try and keep them fairly short, but uh, you know, in order to cover everything, it, um, it's a little long. <laughs> so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Here is my movie room. So here is the door to the room. So what I'm gonna do is actually sort of start here and then I'm gonna go around this way in the room and just kind of kind of go over as much as I can there's the screen and then there's everything over here and then coming right back to the door now right out of the gate I'm just going to throw off a couple things that are in the center of the room first off uh, there is extension cord on uh, the ground here because I'm using that for some of the lights which I'll bring in for certain sections and let's just get one thing out of the way that will drive people nuts and that is some very poor uh, wire management and yes my receiver is currently on the floor this is not supposed to be this way I really wanted this taken care of before I did the video but uh, the piece of furniture I was going to have here uh, that the receiver was going to go on and then was going to manage the wire. It, anyway, uh, didn't work out. The piece of furniture was actually going to be too tall. So it was going to cut into the bottom of the screen. So I was not able to do that. So uh, just uh, as best you can, just ignore this. And that is a Denon receiver. And I do have a very small TV. I've actually had for a long time that I use to connect to the receiver in case I have to change a couple settings or something. And then coming over here, this is my uh, Boston uh, center speaker on a little stand, which looks a lot nicer uh, when the uh, cables are under better control. This is my Martin Logan. Uh, subwoofer that uh, actually I got not too long ago to go with my Martin Logan uh, left and right speakers that I've had for many many years and then my older subwoofer here with a little sign on it it's actually going to go in the back of the room now that little cheesy sign above it uh, does not normally go there I just put it there temporarily and then there's the little Sam light that I got uh, at Halloween time it was from Spirit Halloween some of you may remember that from I think one of my pickups video I think I had it in there and then I do have two of these these uh, Klipsch uh, Dolby Atmos speakers because I don't have any speakers in the ceiling so what these do is they bounce sound up and it is almost freaky how well it actually simulates uh, sound to make it actually sound like it is in fact coming off the ceiling and then just come over here to my table now my table technically is not supposed to be in here but I can't put it anywhere else at the moment. Uh, so it's in here temporarily. Uh, it's off to the sides, you know, it's not exactly center of the room so that it doesn't block the sound coming from the center speaker. And obviously here on the table, you can see I have some uh, Trick or Treat Studios Halloween 3 masks, which again, not supposed to be in here, uh, but they're just in here temporarily. And this is the NECA Halloween 3 box. I have the figures set up somewhere else. I just had the box in here so from the unboxing. So I decided to just temporarily put it next to the masks. And then coming over here is a very cool book that uh, my buddy Rob got for me. And it's basically all about title sequences in movies and stuff and sort of the artwork or the art that goes into designing them. And then next to that is 
the Severn film. God, it's, it's to make a Blood Island drink. And it came with a little mixer and these coasters. And then these here, they, uh, Screen Factory used to have these coasters that they would send with certain orders. And I have like a bunch of them. So I put some of them here, obviously with the Escape from New York one on top. And there's my NECA Jason mask, uh, which is not supposed to be here. I just didn't know where else to put it. So I just figured I'm just gonna leave it here at the moment. And then uh, two Severn things here. That is uh, the ball from the Changeling, uh, that little replica that they had if you got their bundle. And then this sort of brain squeezy thing, that she, uh, you know, one of those like stress balls kind of thing. And then this is a little Batman setup and it's really nice. It's actually like made out of metal. It's got a really good weight to it. Holds on mag magnetically to uh, the base there. Now we're gonna come around here uh, cause I'm gonna mention them real quick even though they're probably not as clean as I wish they were. And that is uh, my chairs. And I absolutely love them. As you can tell, I got me um, Creepy Company, um, you know, throw blankets on them, the Halloween one, which you see a lot in my videos, the Creep Show one, which I showed uh, in a recent unboxing along with the pillow. And then this is a Freddy pillow that I got at um, Spirit Halloween, last Halloween. Creep Show pillow here I got from my buddy John Kitley, who does a lot of conventions. And his book, by the way, uh, is right here, which I highly recommend. Just two uh, hats I have, Halloween hat here, and then this awesome Day of the Dead one from Fright Rags. And then here in this centerpiece, uh, open it up. I don't know if you can see it's basically where I keep a bunch of like the remotes and stuff and yes I do have a bunch of remotes for those like LED lights and everything obviously it's very well organized that's why I keep it tucked away and these are mechanical so they do uh, some buttons on the side if you can see here that does sort of operate them. So they do actually recline and everything. Let's get over here, because I'm sure some of you have noticed it and been like, wait, go back to Chucky. Uh, so yes, this is the Trick or Treat Studios Chucky doll. Um, this is the Kickstarter version. So it came with a bunch of extra stuff and everything. And again, this is not supposed to be in here. Um, I just, the where I want to put them is not ready yet. So I keep him in here just so he's kind of safe and everything. But honestly, I've really gotten used to him being in here. I have to admit, even though it's not ideal, the, you know, quote unquote, life-size Chucky in the box. And then just some of the extras, you know, little, what sticker here, uh, this sort of construction bib, uh, this sort of like foam knife and everything, hammer, uh, fake batteries, good guy batteries, the pin. This is the Scream Factory poster back here that came uh, with the uh, Scream Factory release. And then down here is the construction helmet. And then on the floor here is, uh, this is the Scream Factory release with the alternate cover. This is the Fright Rags uh, card set. This is the NECA, I think, is it the Ultimate Chucky? I mean, or it's one of them anyway. It's an awesome, awesome one. Looks a little dark on camera. Those are the Scream Factory NECA figures that came if you pre-ordered Child's Play from Scream Factory directly. So we're back here by the door. So I'm gonna start going over this way, but I just wanted to point out, because I think I didn't at the start of the video, and that is, yes, that is uh, my screen. That is an elite screen. It's uh, 135 inches, I believe. If it's different, I will post the dimensions. Um, it is technically bigger than they recommend for a room this size, but you know what? It's my room and I wanted the bigger screen. And we'll just kind of start right here. So we got some Scream Factory posters here. I hope you can see these okay. It's the top one is Escape from New York and Manhunter. I think actually if I move these up, I could have a room for one more I could put underneath there, which is what I'm thinking about doing. And then here, um, as you can see, so this is just as you enter, and we'll just start off right here, which is my Sideshow Collectibles uh, C-3PO and R2-D2 statues. These are a pricey, but these are also some of my favorite characters. Okay, so coming back, I turned the lights on. Probably should have done that sooner, so hopefully you can see there's 3PO with his eyes lit up. And R2 with all kinds of lights going off. Absolutely love these statues. So this is, you know, sort of the greet you here as you come in. The little Star Wars sign in front are actually uh, bookends that I got. Um, they were actually on like discount at a place, but I absolutely love it. 
and it seems to just work perfectly like right here. Now underneath is the more recent Skywalker Saga uh, Best Buy exclusive 4K set I, that I did the unboxing of. And I realized it actually fit perfectly underneath here for right now. And then underneath there, that's something, um, geez, my sister got me this years ago. It's actually like a dog toy of <laughs> the Millennium Falcon with Han and Chewie. I've had it forever and it's just like, you know what, I just put it there because I was like, yeah, why not? Okay, so coming up, uh, we'll go up and then down. So here are some lobby cards that I have framed. And these are original lobby cards. So first one is from the French Connection. And then down here is from The Godfather. Fantastic one for The Godfather. I lucked out on getting that. I mean, that's iconic. Here's one uh, for The Third Man. This is uh, not from the original release, but actually from a re-release from, I believe, 1956, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's one of my, well, I mean, all three of these are, you know, my top favorite films. So happy to have those here. This is something that is obviously very, very special to me, and that is a picture of me and my friends, and we are actually at Monroeville Mall. So we did this Romero film location trip uh, a couple of years ago, and when we were at Monroeville Mall, we wanted to replicate this photo, and so we did. And it's like one of my favorite things ever. And it's bittersweet, obviously. Every time I come in the room, I get to see the picture. And at the same time, um, it also has uh, my friend Nikki, who is the one who passed away last year. So uh, yeah, happy, sad memory for sure. And then coming over here is uh, two autographs that I did not intend to keep here, but I've just gotten used to them and I think they look perfect together. And that is obviously for uh, George Romero and Bill Hinsman. And they're just two black and white autographs that I have. And I found these silver frames and I was like, oh my God, that just seems so perfect. And underneath here is my Criterion stuff. Um, almost all of them. Actually, I have uh, some ones that I got during their last sale that I need to somehow see if they'll fit on here. But generally, these are at least most of my Criterion titles, uh, including the Bergman set and the more recent Godzilla set. Over here on this shelf, as you can tell, there's my Terminator poster, and that is an original Terminator poster. Above my uh, side, I think it's an early Sideshow Collectibles Terminator 2, you know, endoskeleton and everything. I hope the batteries still work. Yes, I hope you can see that. The whoops, it went out. The eyes sort of lighting up there. Come on, focus camera. So there's uh, the Terminator 2 and they went out again. Okay, <laughs> at least hopefully you got the idea. Uh, it's made out of metal. Uh, it's really, really nice. It was, I think, one of the first collectibles I ever got that really cost a decent amount of money. And then underneath there is the very flawed Terminator 2 4K release. Um, and then the two NECA uh, future war vehicles there and then this is the terminator 2 endoskeleton hand this was that um exclusive not exclusive but uh that limited version that you got when this came out um it's plastic it's overpriced but at the same time it looks so cool sitting on the shelf so i'm very conflicted because i really wish i paid maybe half of what i paid for but at the same time, I have to admit, it is actually a cool thing to have. And then that is my, uh, also another early Sideshow Collectibles piece. And that is of Jaws, uh, of Bruce the Shark, obviously from Jaws. And what's cool about this, this is one of my favorite pieces because it's actually modeled after uh, the actual design of the shark from Jaws. It's not like, you know, interpretation or a realistic take. It's literally modeled after the mechanical shark. And it actually comes with, which I still have, I have the box in storage, and it came with like uh, reprints of the original blueprints and everything. Absolutely love this piece. This is not going anywhere. I'm gonna keep this as long as humanly possible. Uh, unfortunately, it's not as well lit. So uh, bear with me on this. I hope the camera picks it up okay. So first off, ignore the wires behind him. Hopefully you can see it okay. And this is my Mondo Alfred Hitchcock 12 inch figure here 
Um, and really, really cool. This was one I kind of ordered, I think, as soon as it went up for sale. Because, you know, how often are you going to get, like, a figure of Hitchcock like this? And then over here, uh, we have the reaction figure uh, Hitchcock. And then underneath here, I hope you can see this okay, is my NECA Freddy Krueger uh, figure and the furnace. And I do have the light turned on, which I think looks kind of cool. So this is uh, the Freddy Krueger from uh, First Nightmare on Elm Street. So on the other side of this cabinet is the Sideshow Collectibles, and it's still kind of dark. Oh, I hope you can see that okay. Uh, Sideshow Collectibles 12 inch figures of uh, Snake Plissken and Jack Burton. Absolutely love these figures. I need to get some better light in here but I hope that's picking up okay on camera. And underneath, um, I wasn't sure what to have on this shelf, so at some point I will find something. It, it momentarily has a couple NECA figure boxes, but that is not what's gonna stay here. Okay, so we're gonna go into the center part now. Now this is my projector. So um, this is an older Panasonic projector and it is HD only. And I really want to upgrade to 4K in this room. So all of my 4K stuff, um, I can watch it in here, but it would be downgraded to HD. So I don't get the added benefits of 4K or HDR or Dolby Vision or anything like that. The projector I want to get uh, is really expensive, but I also don't want to settle. Uh, I figure, you know, when the time comes, once uh, I can get it, I really want to get the best one I can. But yeah, this is how I watch uh, my movies currently on my big screen back there. Underneath here is uh, something very, very special to me. This is actually an original still that was uh, goes back to 1936 for the movie Dodsworth. I love the film Dodsworth. I think I've mentioned it many times. Underneath here, this is my Sony 4K player. Uh, so I can watch 4K discs in here, but like I said, it just, it down converts them to HD. Underneath here is my Fright Night uh, photo op from Flashback Weekend uh, 2018, which was, you know, it's one of my favorite things. Uh, Fright Night, of course, one of my favorite movies. And then uh, another thing I love, one of my favorite movies as well, a funny thing happened the way the forum. Again, I have a couple of original stills from it. And this is one of them, and you know, it just makes me laugh every time I see it with the four leads. So that is there along with the Hot Toys um, Infinity Gauntlet, which is supposed to light up, but the batteries are dead, so yeah. Okay, so I'm back over here, just uh, sort of moving this light around to help just a little bit. And so we're getting over here to the end here. And as you can see here, this is my Dark Knight Rises uh, teaser poster above my uh, Dark Knight statues, obviously of Batman and the Joker. Uh, there's the 4K uh, set of the Dark Knight trilogy, the Christopher Nolan one. This is just like a die cast one of the Tumblr. It was like 20 bucks I found at Target. This is actually a Japanese little kind of thing of the bat that I found. Very, very cool, highly detailed. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely very fragile, so you don't want to move it around too much. But uh, yeah, it's still cool to have. And then down here are just uh, the Blu-ray release of Dark Knight uh, with a little bat pod miniature. Um, and then over here, Dark Knight Rises Blu-ray, you know, the broken mask and everything. I love that. And then just underneath here, just kind of just, I didn't know where else to put them. So this is my Lawrence of Arabia Blu-ray box set. And then uh, my sort of Turbo Kid sort of, special thing it comes with a blu-ray and a t-shirt and a pin and um and stuff and it just looks like sort of an oversized vhs box and everything so i don't know love turbo kid didn't know where else to put it so it's here and actually i'm okay with that so coming back up um let's see gonna get over here and this is uh the severn bundle for the uh the amicus set just came with this picture literally in the frame so it just sits above my Klipsch uh, speaker. And by the way, both speakers in the back here are both the same Klipsch ones on these stands. And behind it, uh, that is actually an original still from Heat, which I uh, got a bunch of stills from, uh, I believe they came from the press kit. I don't have the press kit, but I did get the stills um, and everything. So I have that framed here. Underneath this, it's a burial ground 
uh, print that uh, Severin sent out on their release. If you got it, it was like a bundle or something. I love Burial Ground, so that's under that's here. Underneath there is just a temporary place. This is not going to go here, but this is the NECA final chapter mask. I just have it here momentarily. I've mentioned in other videos, but I just realized I didn't mention in this one. In the center there is uh, one of my Escape from New York posters. That is uh, one that I managed to get an original one that is actually rolled, which are not, uh, you can find them, but they're not easy to find and they're not cheap. I had it professionally framed, uh, costs a lot, but is, you know, Escape from New York is one of my favorite movies. And this is one that I really wanted in here. And it's a little bit of kind of the centerpiece of the room a bit. Okay, so I think I have gone through everything over here. So now we're gonna get to this side of the movie wall. There are two, so this is the first one. So in this first part here, this is basically my, what I would call almost like my non-horror studio section here. And you can see at the top, I have some of the Warner Brothers uh, box sets that they unfortunately no longer make anymore, which is kind of a shame because I'm actually a really big fan of them. But uh, just going from left to right, they're in alphabetical order. So it goes Ben-Hur, Casablanca, Gone with the Wind, Singing in the Rain, Sound of Music, and The Wizard of Oz. And then basically the rest of this, again, it's, it's all studio stuff, you know, comedy, uh, drama, action, you know, science fiction, everything else uh, outside of horror. And then coming over to the next section, uh, the shelf stuff I'll get to uh, in a moment. So outside of the first two, which are not uh, put away properly yet, and that's uh, Suspiria and Stand By Me, this is basically all of my 4K titles. And they go all the way down with the exception of the last two shelves, which are basically the uh, sort of Marvel and DC movies. And then finally, the last section, which I'll get into a little bit more detail, but just real quick. This is basically then my horror section uh, that is more studio based or uh, independent titles that, you know, I may only have like one or two versions of their movies and stuff. They're in alphabetical order. That's a little NECA. Uh, Alien, you know, the derelict spaceship uh, right next to the uh, the anthology box set. So the centerpiece here is, uh, as you can see, it's an Evil Dead cabin. It's in between Evil Dead uh, Blu-ray and the Evil Dead Blu-ray steelbook. Um, this is from Homemade Horror, and they make amazing pieces. And this is actually a little uh, ornament of the cabin. And I don't know if you can see inside, but there's actually a little picture in there of Ash um, in there. And it's just an absolutely amazing piece. I'm so happy to have it. So I have it here on my shelf over here. Uh, again, just more is my jaws. And this is, I think this is like a, is this Hallmark or somebody that had this? This is another ornament. I don't know if the batteries still work, but if you hit the button. Yeah, that does work. Okay, good. I hope you can hear that okay. You should probably be careful. I don't want to get a <laughs> copyright struck because I'm playing the Jaws theme. But most of these are just, again, just kind of studio-based until we get down here at the bottom, which may be really hard to see. So you have, uh, what was that, a German release of Revolver, which I think I had in a pickups video. Uh, a Serbian film, and that actually is a Blu-ray, and that is the full unrated version. The old Omen set from 20th Century Fox, and then the rest are digibooks. Um, I think there are German and Austrian uh, releases of different movies. Uh, Ragman, which is uh, actually Trick or Treat. Elvira, Existence, uh, the two Andy Warhol, you know, the Dracula Frankenstein. Uh, Fright Night Part 2, fantastic release. Uh, the Hitcher and Schlock, which uh, Arrow eventually put out, and then that deluxe edition of Possession. So uh, these top shelves are very specific. This top shelf here, all of my John Carpenter films. So as you can see uh, on the top left, those are the 4K uh, releases that Studio Canal did of The Fog, Escape from New York, Prince of Darkness, and They Live. And then just John Carpenter films, you know, from all the different releases, whether or not they were a Scream Factory or a studio release or what, I mean, they're all here. And then on this shelf over here, this is obviously my Romero shelf, 
uh, including some DVDs of Bruiser because we don't have that on Blu-ray yet. And then the uh, Arrow set, kind of front-facing there. And then obviously you have Creepshow and Dark Half and the Japanese version of Martin. Uh, the Criterion Night of the Living Dead, that's the only Criterion title that's not with the other Criterion ones. And then obviously, you know, all different releases of Dawn and everything from there. So above those two on the top shelf here is obviously some uh, Romero and John Carpenter stuff. So starting on the Romero side, uh, there's obviously an autograph of George Romero, one of several that I have that I've gotten, been lucky enough to get over the years. And then to the right are the uh, the Mezco Dawn of the Dead figures, which are amazing. Behind it, it's a little bit hard to see, but that's actually a sort of 3D piece, obviously from the end of uh, the Creepshow segment, something to tide you over. Above that is a really cool Martin pin from Mouth of Madness. As you can see there, and it came with a little fake uh, syringe and everything. And to the right here on the wall is another one of those 3D ones, obviously of the Creepshow teaser poster. And then coming over here to the John Carpenter side, obviously there's a still there. That's an original still from The Fog. Uh, it probably came from like the press kit or something. So it goes back to 1980. Uh, it's a picture you can find easily online. I just, I really wanted sort of an original one and I was lucky enough to find one um, not too long ago, actually. And then to the left of that is a couple things behind there, which is a little bit hard to see. I think it's another one of those 3D little things. I want to say that's maybe the Turkish Escape from New York poster. In front of that is a, I think it was a loot crate thing uh, of the thing. Underneath them, the sunglasses that, those are They Live sunglasses that I got when I saw John Carpenter uh, in concert. And then that is the Turbine, uh, the Thing box set, which is amazing. And then to the left is uh, obviously a Christine car replica. Uh, what I love about this one is that it's obviously from Christine from the beginning of the movie uh, where it's you know all beat up and everything which I absolutely love. Behind that is the Best Buy exclusive uh, Steelbook Blu-ray and that's just a little art piece the VHS there. That's a little art piece. Uh, it actually has sort of half of the poster image of Christine on uh, each side of the tape and then this is just the Scarface statue that came with a more recent 4k release and then the uh nakatomi plaza blu-ray release of uh the die hard series from a couple years ago and above all of that uh just a couple quick things there's the reaction figure snake pliskin figures um probably won't stay there but they're there for right now uh a prince of darkness print that i got actually when i got the escape from new york uh print from the studio canal 4k re-releases to the left of that is a Joe Al's autograph. Outside of working on Jaws, he also worked on Escape from New York and did a lot of the storyboards and stuff. And when I met him, he had these um, copies of some of the storyboards. So have that there. Underneath there is an autograph photo I have of Dean Cundey on the set of Escape from New York. Dean Cundey is one of my idols when it comes to cinematography. And the way up there, hope you can see that okay, that's the uh, NECA Snake Pliskin. I actually have two of those, uh, so that's one of them up there right now. And then underneath here real quick, this is actually a die-cast metal version that I've had for a long time. Obviously, I have the DeLorean from the first uh, Back to the Future. And then underneath here, uh, just the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood sort of deluxe set, along with my <laughs> uh, bobblehead of Tommy Wiseau uh, from The Room. All right, so getting back over here to the wall. Uh, so above the George Romero stuff, uh, these are original animation cells. Uh, I've talked about them before, but I don't know how many of you may have seen those early videos. And this is, these are actually from Rick Catazone, who did the animation for Creepshow and Creepshow 2. So on the left are uh, two frames from Creepshow 2. Top one is of the bat, literally right before it turns into the title uh, that says Creepshow 2. Underneath that, obviously, is Billy right there. And then the two on the left, uh, on the right, I'm sorry, are obviously from Creepshow. Uh, the one on top is right before he flies away from the window. And then underneath is literally the first time you see him... Uh, as he turns from a live action to animation. I've mentioned how special Creepshow is to me. So, I mean, I literally cannot tell you how much this means to me to have these in my collection. Okay, so going over here, some of this stuff you guys have seen before, some of it you haven't. 
Um, so let us start out with the, let's get the posters out of the way. So obviously, cause they're obvious, uh, uh, these are original posters. Uh, first one obviously is the abominable Dr. Fibes and the other one is Lucho Fulci's The Gates of Hell. Um, these are actually here for a reason because there's going to be a series of videos where this here may actually be the backdrop. And down here obviously are some of my statues. So as you can tell uh, on the left, that's the Michael Myers statue, which I did a whole video on. So definitely go check that out. Absolutely love that piece. Um, waited forever for it. And then next to it is all of my Sideshow collectibles uh horror statues that they did i wish they were doing more but so far those these are the only ones that they've done obviously going left to right is uh pinhead and then freddy krueger jason and leatherface and behind the statues i just have some photo ops uh some of them obviously from a couple years ago because i look a little bit different uh so this one is obviously with doug bradley and ashley lawrence behind pinhead behind freddy is an older one of me with robert england and heather langenkamp Behind Jason is one of the more recent ones. That's actually me with uh, almost all of the Jason actors. And yes, they are in costume. Absolutely love that photo. And then finally behind Leatherface is uh, one of my Gunnar Hansen autographs. And then underneath them in this piece right here, it's just a bunch of the box sets. I really didn't know where else to put them. Uh, but luckily this worked out pretty good. And you can tell there's my like shock and gore set which i mentioned also recently it's one of my favorite box sets and just yeah you know halloween and phantasm and the omen and a whole bunch of other ones are underneath there here on the wall is a blood feast mini poster and i do have an original one sheet for it but uh last time i met Herschel gordon lewis i got this uh from him and it's actually autographed it's right above the title and underneath that is a reprint of one of the lobby cards from They Call Her One Eye, aka Thriller, which I had autographed by Christine Lindbergh when I met her. On the wall there is a reprint, obviously, of the final photo from The Shining. Underneath there, I hope you can see that okay, I mentioned in my recent Friday 13th video, that is the Adrian King poster uh, autograph poster that I got from her a couple of years ago. Okay, so that is everything I think for this side of the room. So then we're going to swing around here. There's the screen. I had to move Chucky out of the way. So there are a couple lights in the foreground. I apologize about that in advance. So now we're going to get into this side of the room. It's mainly horror, but it's also more company based, which means uh, sort of all my some of my favorite labels. Um, are all over here. So let me just jump right into it. Okay, so starting over here, uh, you'll notice on the wall pictures here, and these are from Joel Robinson. A uh, huge fan of Joel Robinson, as I think I've mentioned before, and he uh, does a lot of conventions and stuff. He's obviously probably best known because he's done uh, some of the Scream Factory covers and stuff. Uh, really, really great guy, he does amazing work. Obviously this first one is from Halloween, Michael Myers coming through the closet. And underneath there, hopefully you can see that okay, is obviously the Psycho House. And I do have another Joel Robinson one up here, and that is sort of my Jason montage poster that I absolutely love. It has all the Jasons, um, at least currently anyway. All right, so coming over here then are two prints that I got when I got a Nightbreed from the Clive Barker website. So there's the first one and the second one and then moving over to this next section top there i think i mentioned in my alien video just uh two neca uh things at the top which have some face huggers and some uh, chest purses underneath that is this sideshow collectibles alien egg with a face hugger coming out of it and then this section is sort of uh some of the labels that i don't have a ton of ones for so the top here uh it starts those are my trauma titles and then uh, the, unfortunately now no longer existing, uh, Twilight Time ones that go down to about there. And then the ones down there, I think those are uh, kind of a mixture. Got some like 88 films, some uh, AGFI, Cult Epics, Raro, Mondo down there at the bottom, uh, a couple umbrella titles. So uh, this first part of what I'll call the center shelving, part right here. It's actually divided up into four sections. Um, I'll, again, I'll get back to the shelf stuff uh, in a bit, but basically starting here 
And this is all my uh, vinegar syndrome. Well, almost all. Oh, actually, I have a couple that I'm not sure where to put. So it starts off with their sort of wooden divider at the very, very top. And then it has a couple DVDs and then it goes into the five years, five movie series, and then all... Basically, they're just in alphabetical order. These are the ones that I have slip covers for. And these go down to about there to the ones that I either didn't have slip covers or ones that I have that don't have slip covers. Again, alphabetical order. And then they get down to sort of more the adult titles. Uh, so, and those are, again, alphabetical. And then they go all the way down to where the Ghoulies is. So the Ghoulie obviously represents the start of my full moon section there. Um, and then... So real quick, here are some of uh, their figures. As you can tell here, there's the uh, Puppet Master one, and then I have several of the Laser Blast one, including the uh, Glow in the Dark one. I think I mentioned before how much I love Laser Blast, uh, and every time they seem to have like these on sale, I think some of these actually I got at the convention, you know, super cheap, and I was like, I love Laser Blast, so I'm gonna get several of them. There's the start of my uh, sort of full moon section to the uh, right of the ghoulie there and then underneath there is the older puppet master set which only came actually with three movies i got that uh, many years ago and then uh to the right of that are sort of the blu-ray vhs mock-ups of uh, puppet master and laser blast and then just a bunch of different titles in the center uh the transfer the older transfers uh dvd set but i do have it autographed and then some of their Grindhouse uh, DVDs. All right, so pulling back out, we're gonna get into uh, sort of this middle section here, which is also sort of divided into two areas. So on the first part, which again starts here, this here going all the way down, these are all my Screen Factory titles. Um, obviously I don't have every single one, but as you can tell, I have a decent amount going all the way down to the bottom. And they basically start at the top here with uh, their Steelbook uh, releases, which I think I have all of them, or I have like all, you know, all but one maybe. And then the rest are just in alphabetical order. Uh, and then some of them I have uh, the alternate slipcovers sort of next to it. So that's probably what's sticking out on a couple of these. But yep, these are, I'd say about 90% of my Screen Factory ones. I think there's a couple that I still need to see if I can squeeze in there or not. And then pulling back, uh, we'll do the other half of this middle section. And this is uh, some of the other companies. I hope you can see that okay, sir. But there's a little bit of glare. As you can tell, some of them I still need to find room for, so they're piling up up there. But in essence, the top shelf is my Blue Underground section there, which bleeds a little bit into the second shelf, as you can tell, up into Zombie. And then I have all 17 of the Vestron titles. Hopefully we can get more, but yeah. And then to the right of the Vestron ones are a couple of the MVD titles that I have. And then underneath there is uh, Synapse, which is most of the shelf, and then the Grindhouse releasing titles that I have. And then underneath that are sort of a mixture of Shout and Shout Select titles and ending with the older Roger Corman titles. And then underneath there, is the start of my Scorpion releasing, which goes uh, all through there and then about uh, halfway under the shelf um, underneath it. And then there starts my Severin ones, which uh, takes up the other half, goes to the next shelf, and it goes all the way down to the bottom, including the uh, Intervision VHS ones at the very end there. And then pulling back here, uh, I got the last part of this middle shelving unit here. Uh, so as you can see, it has the uh, first release of the classic monsters, which is basically just the original films with none of the sequels. And then after that, it might be a little bit hard to see with the glare, but that's actually each of the full sets that they've released since then. So it's, you know, Creature in Black Lagoon series, Dracula, uh, Frankenstein, Invisible Man, The Mummy, and then The Wolfman. And then these busts are the ones that came with the DVD sets from way back when. I wish they had done more of these. Um, and I wish they still did these. This kind of thing I absolutely love. I know I think a lot of you also have these as well, and I just absolutely love them. And then to the right of those is the start of my Kino uh, section. So those are some of my Buster Keaton titles there. I'm a huge Buster Keaton fan. And then going down, it's just all my Kino titles, 
which are a lot because every time they have one of their insane sales, I tend to kind of load up a bit and the Kino ones go all the way down. And yes, I do have two copies of Ryan Rex in case you noticed. And then that shelf down there is actually uh, the Warner Archive ones that I have. And then finally on the bottom shelf there, uh, a couple of the Warner Archive ones, and then the rest are my Code Red titles, which actually bleed over into this final um, shelving unit. So the top, the I'm sorry, the bottom two shelves are the rest of my Code Red titles over there. And yes, don't mind the wirings. I'm moving lights and stuff around, so I apologize about that. So speaking of which, we're going to get over into this final uh, cabinet here, which has uh, basically it's my arrow titles uh, again some of them i need to make room for uh so the bigger sets obviously are on sort of like almost the first two shelves and then start the ones with the uh, the collector's edition with the slip covers and then uh more of the slip covers and then just the non-slip cover uh versions there that go down including a couple of the older uh two of the older like argento titles and then i have a couple garage uh, garage house titles which are all those like trailer compilations and then finally on this little bit here it's a mix between the uh it's a couple indicator titles and second sight titles so as you can tell it have i have the uh, two william castle box sets uh night of the demon um and then the second sight uh, when a stranger calls and extra sets hopefully i can add dawn of the dead later this year that would be awesome and then that is it for the movies and then just uh real quick i'll kind of go over the stuff on the shelves but i do want to kind of just cover the artwork so up here is one of my favorite pieces this is artist print so it's printed on a very special stock and uh, actually from the artist himself and this is actually one of uh, 25 if i remember correctly and obviously it's of disney's legend of sleepy hollow which is one of my favorite things i watch it every halloween so i think i mentioned before absolutely love this has so much meaning for me because when i was a kid i was i loved and was terrified by this and uh yeah just so happy to have this as a print and then next to that is a uh i think it's a john kucha artwork i think of uh, obviously zombie from full cheese zombie and then the mondo halloween 3 print uh that i got what a year or two ago okay so now we get to the stuff on the shelves on this first shelf here obviously you can see that there's the more recent phantasm set with the sphere that came with it and next to that is the uh, howling uh sort of collectible is the comic-con uh version so it's really hard to see in the box it actually has blood in the mouth and on the hands i'm really thinking of taking this out of the box i was kind of leaving it in the box you know as sort of a collectible but you know what i really think it looks so much cooler out of the box so there on the top are the neca scream factory figures and as you can tell they start over here with the silent night deadly night one and two so there's billy and ricky the uh, Detective Cameron one from Night of the Creeps. <laughs> the great Tom Atkins. I can't believe we actually have a Tom Atkins action figure, which I'm so excited about. The Killer from Slumber Party Massacre. Obviously, Angela from Night of the Demons. And then finally, uh, Susie and Stooge, also from Night of the Demons. So this actually came with uh, <laughs> one of the Severin bundles a while back, as you can tell, from uh, All Colors of Giallo. These are basically Giallo killer gloves. <laughs> and then this is like an old, I hope you guys can see that okay. So yeah, this is an old Anchor Bay like pen marker thing I've had forever. And then finally, this is uh, this is a Grindhouse releasing, uh, I think it was a Diabolic exclusive. If you got I Drink Your Blood, and this is basically sort of, again, like a, <laughs> I think a pen or something. So that's it for that shelf. And then over here, and then finally, this is sort of the Tough Ones pen exclusive i think again this was uh a diabolic dvd i think exclusive and i just leave that there even though it's gold i still kind of feel like it will ward off hopefully any werewolves including this amazing one of my favorite pieces this is obviously a bust of the wolfman the universal version of lon chaney jr I absolutely love it. I got this at a flashback weekend um, two years ago, I think. But you can tell it just has a whole lot of detail in it. 
Um, I mean, just absolutely amazing. Now, next to that, some of you may remember from an older video, this is actually sort of just a goofy thing I found at Halloween time at Target. It's this sort of, you know, sort of ghostly projector kind of thing. You turn it on, obviously it makes a bunch of noise and stuff. And I don't know if, see if you can see it okay. It actually projects little ghosts and skulls. And when I saw it, I was like, that's actually kind of cool. And it just seemed to fit perfectly into this room. Then finally, this little shelf here. Uh, this has a couple of very, very cool things. So uh, going from left to right, insert for the King Cohen documentary, which is uh, autographed. It actually has, it's autographed by the director of the documentary, the composer, and also of Larry Cohen, which I was so happy that it came with, obviously, it was, uh, God, I think I got this not too, you know, a couple months before he died too. And then underneath that is an actual prop from the stuff. Um, Larry Cohen used to actually go around and he found like a box full of them. I want to say it's probably from the grocery store scene where they had like thousands of them. And uh, he used to sell them at conventions and stuff. And obviously, you know, he signed it and everything. So, uh, so, so happy to have that for so many reasons. And then next to that um, is my uh, Elmer from Brain Damage, my favorite Frank Cannon Lauder film. Next to that is a Clay Guy uh, zombie from obviously Full Cheese Zombie, aka Zombie 2. Uh, and then that's like a Vincent Price, it was like a Rue Morgue sculpt of, it's supposed to be Vincent Price. Um, and I, you know, went on, I think Diabolic had them forever. And then like, I think it just went on sale like super cheap, so I grabbed one. Underneath that is uh, obviously my Hellraiser box, which I got um, again two years ago, I think. And I absolutely love it. I've, I wanted one for such a long time and I figure if I'm gonna get one, I wanna get like a really, really good one. And it's such a, a perfect recreation of it. And it's in this little display box, which is actually, I think for baseballs or something, uh, which I picked up. At, you know, the store was closing and they were like almost giving them away. So I just grabbed one and figured, well, one day I'll do something with it. And then I kind of figured like, I should put the uh, Hellraiser box in there, you know, make it look like it's this sort of forbidden piece. And I think it just works perfectly. And just closing out the door portion, I do have a couple posters on the wall. Uh, the one down there is actually from a Serbian film exhibit that was done in LA. Uh, that I, I was not able to attend, but I was able to get a poster. And what's cool about it is that it is autographed by the director. Uh, so it's hidden away down there <laughs> for probably obvious reasons. Um, and then this is the Scream Factory Creep Show uh, poster. And then finally the uh, Shout Factory Bill and Ted poster. Um, and these ones I tend to swap out uh, from time to time as well. So yeah, I think that is basically everything in my movie room. Hope I covered everything on the screen. And then finally all this crazy stuff over here. So that's it, that is my room tour. And uh, don't be alarmed, I do actually look a little bit different than I did at the uh, start of the video. It's because this thing has taken forever and a day. <laughs> and a lot has changed in the last uh, week or so. If you have any questions on anything, please let me know. I am planning to do a quick follow-up video if you want uh, sort of greater detail on anything in here. So I know this was a long time coming, but hopefully it was worth the wait. I know it's a little bit longer than my other videos. So uh, hopefully I was able to keep your interest at least for most of it. And if this is your first video of mine that you're watching, uh, first off, welcome. And I hope you subscribe and hopefully I can keep you around for a long time. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.